Hi YouTube, again just off the cuff, I decided to have a look at what's called Sab al Rasul, which is insulting Muhammad or insulting Allah. What are the penalties in the Sharia, because the Sharia is ultimately the definitive ruling on what will happen. Don't forget, the Quran is dualistic. The Quran is sophist. It literally argues both sides of the argument. You can look at the Quran verse that says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Or you can look at 385, which says, whoever wants religion other than Islam, never will it be accepted of him. Completely contradictory. So a Muslim or anyone can take the Quran and literally argue both sides because of its sophist nature, its dualistic nature. The Sharia is definitive. It comes down on one side. Hence, we will look at the Sharia. The book is called The Unsheathed Sword Against the One Who Insults the Messenger, and this is by Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, a major scholar within Islam. We're not going to look at every single page, but we're going to see how many times it says to kill the one who does it, and uh, who's for saying the count is zero? I know, nobody. The first issue, whoever insults the Prophet is to be killed, whether they are Muslim or a disbeliever. Killing is prescribed on him, the one who insults the Prophet, and it is not permissible to imprison or show favor to him or to ransom him. Any Muslim or non-Muslim who insults the Prophet is to be killed and repentance is not sought from him. Let's continue. This book concerns the Islamic ruling upon those who insult the final Prophet and Messenger, Muhammad. Sheikh Uthaymin said in explanation of the saying of Halajawi concerning the apostate, this is someone who obviously leaves Islam, so if they do not become Muslim, they are to be killed by the sword. Right? And the scholars, some scholars say they are not to be killed except by the Imam or his deputies. That's so nice. Of course, if someone flees from the land of the Muslims to the Dar al Harb, which is typically in the Sharia it's defined as enemy land, or we would know it as the house of war, then it is for every Muslim to kill them. Because, well, if they're busy fleeing to the land of disbelief, they need to be killed, and any Muslim can kill them. So let's have a look. Sheikh Ul Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned in his very short introduction to whatever that the objective of this work was to clarify the Islamic ruling on this subject. So this is the definitive work on this subject. The first issue the one who insults him, the Prophet, whether Muslim or disbeliever, is to be killed that they are to be killed even if they pay a protective tax in a Muslim state. This is the jizya. Think of protection money you pay to the mafia. One day I'll do a little talk on the dummy status. That's interesting. Concerning the Islamic ruling if they repent and clarification of what constitutes insulting. Let's go further. Whoever insults the Prophet is to be killed whether they are Muslim or a disbeliever. This is the general view of the scholars. The generality of the scholars have consensus that whoever insults him is to be killed. Malik, Laith, Ahmad, Ishak, and Ashafi also said this. These are two of the schools of jurisprudence here. Anuman narrated that the dummy is not killed. Okay, that was his view, but uh, let's continue. You might find they changed their minds. It is narrated, blah, 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 Shafi, that the Muslims have unanimous agreement upon killing whoever insults the Prophet. It is the ruling that whoever insults other than the Prophet is to be lashed. This consensus is taken to be the consensus from the Ta'ibin and the companions of Allah's Messenger, those are people who have met Muhammad. Their consensus upon the obligation of killing such a person if he is a Muslim, right? So, uh, yeah, that what is meant is their consensus upon the killing of such a person if he is a Muslim. The Muslims have a consensus that whoever insults Allah or insults his messenger or rejects anything from what has been revealed by Allah or kills a prophet, then such a person is a disbeliever. Al-Khattabi said, I do not know anyone who differed concerning the obligation of killing such a person. So the scholars have a consensus that whoever insults the messenger or attributes a defect to him as in he is not perfect, then such a person is a disbeliever, an apostate. And of course that's Ridda, and the penalty for Ridda is take a wild guess. Take a wild guess. So yeah, and the saying that the Muslim who insults is killed, there being no disagreement concerning that, then this is the view of the four Imams. These are the four major schools of Sunni jurisprudence, right, Sunni Islamic law. And other and other than them, so other people too. And the Dhimmi is also to be killed. Hmm. 
Okay, they changed their minds. The Demi is to be killed. That's a non-Muslim living under an Islamic state. And according to Malik and the people of Medina, this is also the view of Ahmad and those with understanding of the Hadith. There being numerous texts from Ahmad upon this. Hanbal, again one of the schools of jurisprudence, and a bunch of other people narrated that the Muslim and the disbeliever are to be killed. Is that in the Hadith? He replied, yes, in several Hadith. The Hadith of the blind man who killed a woman when he heard her insulting the Prophet. And the Hadith of Hussein. And Imam Ahmad said, and repentance is not to be sought from them. So there is no difference of opinion narrated from him concerning the killing. Then all of them mention that the one who insults the messenger is to be killed, even if they are a dummy, and that this breaks their covenant. Understand the Sharia is definitive, more so definitive than the Quran. And this is the ultimate sacred law. This is where the Muslim scholars got together and they finally interpreted the mind and the will of Allah. And they created the sacred law, the perfect law, the Sharia. It is eternal. This is the consensus of the major scholars of Islam. There is no going against this. So the one who insults the messenger is to be killed even if they are a dhimmi and that this breaks their covenant. That's the pact that you sign. That's your contract as a dhimmi. Sometimes called the pact of Umar. Here we go again. And the one who insults the messenger is to be killed. Like they're spying upon the Muslims. Well, if you do that and you reveal their weaknesses, you are killed or committing fornication or adultery with the Muslim woman. Yep, you're killed too. Sheikh Ul-Islam said, and this is what is compulsory. Okay, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Shafi, again, one of the leaders of the Shafi well, the School of Jurisprudence, one of the founders, then it is reported from him that insulting the Prophet breaks the covenant and that such a person is to be killed. And it goes on, insulting the Prophet breaks the covenant and necessitates that they be killed. And we go to Hanifa and let's see what he says. When a person does this repeatedly, then it is for the Imam to kill them. That is prescribed by the Sharia. Okay, awesome. They also hold that it is for the Imam to give a discretionary punishment with killing in those matters. Pfft. Who's surprised here? And uh, ma the majority of them gave the religious verdict that the dummy who insults the messenger on numerous occasions is to be killed, even if they repent and they become Muslim. The evidence for the obligation of killing the one who insults. The evidence for the obligation of killing the one who insults Allah or his messenger or his religion or his book. Right? Um, yeah, so there's evidence. So such behavior breaks the covenant. It is in the Quran. It is in the Sunnah and the consensus of the Sahaba, the companions of Muhammad, and also the Tabi'in, which are the people that you know met him and knew him. It is also based on reflection. As for the Quran, the first place is in the saying of Allah, the Most High. Fight against those who believe not in Allah, nor in the last day, nor forbid that which has been forbidden by Allah, and his messenger, and those who acknowledge not the religion of truth, among the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, until they pay the jizya, with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. A tax, it's actually a tribute, don't get fooled by the word tax. A tax taken from the Jews and Christians who are under the protection, quote unquote protection, just like the mafia, you pay them protection money. And they're under a Muslim government, and of course that's a 929. So the order is to fight them until they pay the jizya and feel themselves subdued, so it is not permissible to leave them alone until they are until they are in a subdued state and pay the jizya. Whoever insults Allah or his messenger, then they are not in a subdued state. The one who is subdued is lowly, abased, humbled, and this is an action of one with power. So if you're able to insult Muhammad or the Quran or anything, then you have too much power, you need to be brought low. The second place is the saying of the Most High, but if they violate their oaths after their covenant and attack your religion with disapproval and criticism, then fight the leaders of disbelief, for surely their oaths are nothing to them. I'll pause there. I think the point is clear. I'll leave a link to the book. You read it yourself. I'm guilty. You're guilty. Who knows? Lots of people are guilty. And should Sharia be imposed, well, there's going to be retribution and we're going to be killed. And in fact, people have been killed for insulting Muhammad. Think Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, I think it goes without saying that, yes, clearly from this, Islam is a religion of peace. Peace. <laughs>